Welcome to the Nicholas 11 X12 technology. Today we're looking at the Gigabyte GAF2 A75M D3H FM2 motherboard. As it already says in the model name, the A75 chipset is used. Alright, but here's the box. Again we're looking at the Gigabyte F2 A75M D3H motherboard, that's an FM2 board. This is an ultra durable 4 board and this means it comes with great features and protections. This board supports AMD dual graphics and Affinity and of course also is Windows 8 ready. On the box it even says 3D BIOS, this is Gigabyte's UEFI BIOS name. On the back of the box you got lots of details on the features and there even is a little picture of the board itself. But now let's open the box up and see what's inside. Alright here's the standard IO shield. It looks fairly cheap but hey the whole motherboard isn't very expensive. Then here are 4 black SATA 6 gigabit per second cables and that's very nice of gigabyte to include. Right here is an easy setup guide, the user's manual and not to forget the driver CD. But I'd recommend downloading the latest drivers from gigabyte's website, especially if you decide to use this board with the new Windows 8. That's the multilingual installation guidebook, very nice, you get lots of instructions. And last but not least the mud board in an anti-static bag. I'll take out the board now and there it is. The first impression seems to be good as Gigabyte went with a good layout. Remember this is a smaller form factor board called Micro ATX, not standard ATX. The PCB seems to be pretty robust as it doesn't get bent that easy, which is good. But now let's fly over the motherboard so we can take a closer look at it. Gigabyte went with their standard blue and white color scheme and lots of people like that and a lot don't like it. That's clearly a matter of taste. The layout seems to be done perfectly for a micro ATX board at this price point. So yeah, overall it's a pretty good looking motherboard. The FM2 socket is used which means that this board supports the second generation of AMD A series APUs, so basically the Trinity APUs, but not the Lano APUs. Every single one of the AMD Trinity APUs should work flawlessly with this board, but please do not try to install FM1 APUs into the socket. The AMD A75 chipset is used, which is the second best chip coming after A85X. As for the memory, you get 4 DIMMs and the dual channel technology is supported. The maximum amount of RAM you can install are 64GB. You can run memory frequencies from 1066MHz to 1866MHz. But let's get to the SATA connections. Obviously you get 6 blue SATA 6GB per second ports that run off the AMD A75 chipset. All of these ports are standard and aren't stacked like you would see it on more expensive boards. It's good to see that you get 6 ports for the price. Let's move on to the expansion slots. Alright, you got a total of 2 PCI Express 2.0 x16 slots. Here's the PCIe 2.0 x16 slot on the top and the second one is here which is running at x4. In between is a PCIe 2.0 x1 slot for expansion cards like sound cards for example. Lastly you got a single standard PCI slot. If you decide to run an AMD dual graphics configuration, then make sure you install your graphics card right here in the first slot. And if you don't want to run dual graphics then also use the first slot in order to get the best performance. Personally I find it very good that Gigabyte decided to use these PCI Express clips here. So far we've only seen these clips on other motherboards. So yeah, this can make things easier sometimes. Alright, but now I'll show you the fan headers on this motherboard. Right here's the CPU fan header. Right beside the System Fan 2 header and up there beside the 24 pin power connector is the System Fan 1 header. Well, the amount of fan headers on this board isn't bad, considering this is a micro ATX board at this price point. But let's continue with the headers. Here's the color coordinated front panel header, two USB 2.0 headers, one TPM header, one COM header or also known as serial port and last but not least the front panel HD audio header. Not to forget the LPT port near the CPU socket. And beside the 24 pin power connector there also is an internal USB 3.0 header in the ideal location and that's very nice to see at this price point. The 24 pin power connector is right here in its ideal location as well as the ATX 12V 8 pin power connector up there. This motherboard has a 4 plus 1 face power design and that's a standard at this price point. But Gigabyte used high quality components for a longer lifetime. To keep the chipset as cool as possible, Gigabyte placed a small heatsink on it, which looks very nice for my taste. But there is no heatsink placed on the VRMs, so you won't be able to achieve high overclocks on your APU with this board. But this doesn't mean you can't overclock at all, that's pretty good for the price. 
The Realtek ALC887 HD audio codec will take care of the audio playback and recording. You of course notice that this chip doesn't deliver the best audio results, but still it does pretty good for the price. Another thing would be Gigabyte's dual BIOS feature. This basically means there are two physical BIOS chips on the board, a main BIOS and a backup BIOS. So if there goes something wrong with the main one, the backup BIOS chip will transfer over the backup BIOS and you're good to go again. That's a neat feature and it's very nice to see that even on a motherboard at this price point. Now let's get to the back panel. You get two standard USB 2.0 ports, one PS2 combo port, here's one VGA port and one DVI port. Here's one optical SPDIF output, one HDMI port, two USB 3.0 ports, as well as one gigabit LAN and two more USB 2.0 ports. And last but not least, the audio that is powered by the Realtek ALC887 audio codec. But now I'd like to show you the bias of this board. As you can see, this is an UEFI bias, and this type of a bias should be a lot easier to use for beginners. Still, you get lots of options and settings, which is always good. The mouse unfortunately doesn't respond that well in this bias, but that's something we've seen for some time now on Gigabyte's UEFI bias. But it's not that bad and still you could also use the keyboard to navigate. I showed you the advanced bias screen, but let's switch to the 3D bias. Alright, there it is. As you can see it really is 3D and it looks quite interesting and should definitely make things a lot easier for beginners. So the Gigabyte GAF2A75M D3H is a really good choice for people that are looking for a decent motherboard in the lower price range. A board that basically supports every single FM2 processor at the time of this video and even allows you to overclock it even if it isn't much. Great features are offered just like on a more expensive board such as the dual bias and the internal USB 3.0 connection. The design is good as well as the color scheme, but if it was up to me I'd like it even more if Gigabyte went with their black and grey color scheme. Good performance is offered and the UEFI bias will definitely make things a lot easier for beginners, especially when they use Gigabyte's 3D bias. But navigating with the mouse can sometimes be a hassle in the bias. So in the end this motherboard is for people that want a board that can fully support the flagship AMD Trinity APUs with support for dual graphics, great performance and overclocking possibilities for a fairly low price. Pros are amazing price performance ratio, good performance, then I like the good layout, the good amount of features, the UEFI bias and the dual bias feature with the two physical chips. For the cons, well navigating with a mouse and the UEFI bias can be difficult but that's all. I give this motherboard a 10 out of 10 and would definitely recommend it. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.